Hey guys, and welcome back to Life of Con Sports. This is going to be kind of a dual video. I'm going to be doing this on both my new sports channel and my uh, original channel. Whichever channel you're watching this on, make sure you check out the other one. Um, on my original channel, um, I do a lot of reaction stuff, especially acapella reactions. Um, so if you want to check that one out, that would be awesome. And if you're on the original channel, I do a new sports show. Um, where I talk about the NFL, MLB, NHL, NBA, pretty much anything to do with sports. Um, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about some predictions for division winners. Um, so I'm going to be talking about um, division races um, and basically just how teams I think have improved or not improved um, over the course of the offseason. I'm going to get more in depth with it later, um, closer to the season. But as for right now, I'm just going to be predicting which team in each division I think is going to win the division and also their chances of winning the Super Bowl, um, how far they're going to possibly make it. So let's go right into it with the pretty obvious one. It's getting less, a little less obvious now as time goes on, um, but it's still pretty much a lock and that is the AFC East. So. In this division, we've got the New England Patriots, Miami Dolphins, Buffalo Bills, and New York Jets. So let's start with kind of the, it's becoming a little less um, gravy, a little less obvious, but it's still pretty obvious at this point, um, and that is the AFC East. So um, I really see the only possible, uh, it would be a huge um, leap ahead from last season, and it would be a huge shock and surprise to everyone, but the only really big chance that, um, to overthrow the Patriots um, is the New York Jets because New York Jets, they added Le'Veon Bell, you know, um, and everyone says that, you know, if you don't have a good offensive line, if you're not around a really good team, Le'Veon Bell isn't gonna do as good as he did it with the Steelers. Um, and I do agree with that. Um, you know, the Steelers had the best offensive line in the league. That's why Mason Connor is pretty much filling his spot and not quite having them as dominant a season um, as Le'Veon Bell had had over the past few years, but Mason Connor just came in there and basically did his job. Um, and when you have a good offensive line, that's really um, all you need. Um, and so I think the Steelers are gonna regress from losing Le'Veon Bell, um, but it's not gonna be that big of a difference because of their offensive line. So when you throw Le'Veon Bell into the New York Jets system, Obviously, he's not going to do as good as he did with the Steelers because of the offensive line, but it's still Le'Veon Bell, and people don't seem to recognize that. Rather than the offensive line for me, the bigger concern, in my opinion, is the fact that he sat out full, for a full year. Um, I think that, you know, that can really take a toll. Uh, Le'Veon Bell did get suspended a few weeks um, I can't remember what year that was. I think it was just a couple, three years ago, I think it was. Um, he got suspended those four weeks, and I remember a few weeks afterwards, he um, didn't do as good. Um, he was a little bit lacking. And then we talked about how he kind of did his own thing. He's always done his own thing in the off season with, with um, training on his own when he was with the Steelers. And then he'd come back week one and two and just be a little off. And then he'd come back later. Um, so when you're not training with the team, um, you get a little rusty and if you have a full year more than a full year of not playing on any team um that can kind of take a toll on you and so that's what i'm worried about um but i wouldn't see that as too big a deal um especially since again it is Le'Veon bell um he can come back from it i just don't think he's going to be as good as he was with the steelers but that being said as i said before he is still Le'Veon bell and whenever you have Le'Veon bell on your team it's going to drastically improve it um, and not to mention, they also signed C.J. Mosley, a middle linebacker. Um, so that's really going to impact their defense. Um, they got slot receiver Jameson Crowder um, in the offseason. Um, and then they also drafted Quinn Williams in the first round, who's a nose tackle. He's going to be, he's going to improve their offensive line for Le'Veon Bell. Um, so I definitely expect that to happen. Um, I, see, I see the Jets team, however, being kind of middle of the road. Um, I don't think people are saying that the Jets are always the Jets and they're going to suck again like last year. I think they are going to make an improvement. I think that I see them as about an 8-8 eight and eight team. And you can tell me I, if I'm wrong, maybe they'll be a little above that. Maybe they'll be a little below that. 
maybe they'll surprise everyone and make a legitimate shot or make a legitimate um, try for the playoffs and maybe even get it. Um, but the uh, wild card race might be a little bit crowded. But yeah, I do see the Jets as the only legitimate chance of knocking the Patriots off their pedestal. Um, but I think that the Patriots are still going to retain it. It's going to be interesting, though, seeing how, first of all, Tom Brady, he has to he has to shut down eventually, right? I mean, there's a chance that he is a cyborg. Not even going to lie, like, he could be a robot um, because he's, what is he? Is he 42 or 43 now? I think he's 43 now. That's insane. Like, if you if you look at how Brett Favre looked um, when he was 40, um, when he played with the Vikings, he just he was just broken. Like he ever since he got hurt in the Saints um, 2009 um, NFC Championship game. So I'll hate the Saints for that, by the way. And then you look at Tom Brady, and he's just like he's throwing it like like a 30 year old, and it's not even it's not even a joke. He is showing signs of kind of slowing down. People were talking about how he wasn't too accurate in the um, Super Bowl game and everything like that. So I do think he's definitely going to regress. But yeah, I do think that the Patriots will win this division at least once more. And boom, I'm downstairs. Um, there was a little bit of a, some loud noises upstairs. Um, people came home, so I'm down here now. But um, anyway, um, what was I saying? Yeah, the Patriots, I do still think they're going to win the division. Um, but I don't see... Tom Brady winning another Super Bowl and people can people can fight me on that um but I just don't think like I know people have been doubting him ever since he turned 40 but then it gets to a certain point um even even as he's proven people wrong in his 40s it gets to a point where you're 43 you're gonna turn 44 soon and it gets to a point where you just your body's not gonna play, be able to play football to a level that you've been playing it anymore it's just the way it goes so i think you know the the tom brady signed a new extension i think it was like three years i don't think it's gonna last i, I i'm gonna make a bold prediction here that i don't i don't know how bold it actually is but i'm gonna make a bold ish prediction that tom brady isn't gonna last through his whole new contract i don't think he's gonna be able to play football to the his ability anymore the Patriots are acting like he's invis invincible, not invisible, invincible. Um, and they've shown that they think he's invincible because they haven't drafted a quarterback still. Like, it makes no sense that they wouldn't have drafted at least one quarterback, had him at least learn under Tom Brady. Learning under the greatest quarterback of all time is really going to do wonders for a quarterback. And I think it would be stupid if they waited until Tom Brady retired to draft a quarterback. Um, but of course, they don't think he's ever going to retire because they think he's immortal. Um, but yeah, bold prediction, I don't think he's going to last past his contract, or even before the end of his contract. But anyway, that was kind of a long one. Let's get to, um, another interesting one. It's going to be the Ravens, the Steelers, the Browns, and the Bengals in the AFC North. And I legitimately think that the Bengals are the only team that doesn't have a chance to win this division. The Bengals are just going to get preyed upon by all of the, all the teams in this division, basically. Um, but yeah, the Ravens, the Steelers, and the Browns all have a legit shot of um, winning this division. Um, I think people are still sleeping on the Steelers a little bit um, because they lost AB and because they lost Le'Veon Bell. Um, but those are two big personalities that they kind of got rid of um, I think, I think losing both of those players, um, in one sense, obviously did, um, decrease the, uh, the level of play of the team, but at the same time, um, especially hearing all this stupid stuff about AB not, almost refusing to play because he's not going to get his helmet that he wants, like, that's just such a baby thing to do, um, and I lost a lot of respect for my Antonio Brown hearing about that. I've been able to put up with his other fits and tantrums. But um, that was a little bit over the top and is stupid. Um, so yeah, kind of getting rid of that personality um, is kind of a weight off their shoulders. Because um, any team that has Antonio Brown is going to have to carry the weight of him um, throwing a tantrum and a fit every single week. Just like, in, just like Odell Beckham Jr. Um, so I think the Steelers kind of might even be better off without them um and mason connor really did the job of 
um, Le'Veon Bell last season. And then they have Juju Smith-Schuster, um, who's going to fill the role of Antonio Brown, and I think he's going to do a pretty good job of that. Moving on to the Ravens. Um, so the Ravens uh, have Lamar Jackson. They're basically going to be running the ball every single play. And the question is, is Lamar Jackson going to turn into um, Michael Vick, or is he going to turn into RG3? Um, is the real question we have to ask. And if he turns into Michael Vick, the Ravens could be good for a while. If he turns into RG3, um, the Ravens are screwed. So um, that's a big question that might be answered this season. And then we got the Cleveland Browns, which I think is a boom or bust team. Um, they really have the star power to make it far in the playoffs, um, but they also have a lot of big personalities, and I think that's really dangerous. When you add in a brand new starting coach and you add in Odell Beckham Jr. already mixed in with Jarvis Landry um, and they've got plenty of other big name people um, that they got um, over the offseason. You add it in with picking up Kareem Hunt um, with all the controversy surrounding him. Um, I just think it's really playing with fire um, and I think that if they do make it work it's really gonna it's gonna do wonders for them. I think they're going to make it to the playoffs this year. Um, for sure. Um, if it doesn't work out, they're going to be an 8-8 eight and eight team, um, or worse, and there's going to be a lot of fights, a lot of friction. Odell Beckham Jr. is going to not want to leave at the end of even this season, and it's just going to be a train wreck. I don't really know which way it's going to go, um, but what I'm going to do, <sighs> this is a tough one, um, a lot of unanswered questions for all three of these teams, so it's hard to pick a winner. I'm going to say the Steelers win this division. Again, it's a three-way toss-up, and any of those three teams could win the playoffs. Um, sorry, win the division. Um, and you can fight me in the comments about how the Browns, it's their year. Um, but I just think there's a good chance, not a good chance, but there's a pretty good chance that they could self-destruct from all the big personalities. And I could I could easily be wrong, and I would will apologize for that at the end of the season, but I just think they're going to end up being an 8-8 eight and eight team, and there's going to be a lot of frustration. Um, but yeah, either of the, any of these three teams, but I just see the Steelers as the more experienced team, um, with Big Ben, um, and he's, he doesn't have much time left, but I think he's got one more division win in him at least. And then another tough one between the Chiefs and the Chargers in the AFC West. So the Chiefs and the Chargers has been one of the best um, you know, battles this whole, like, last season was a great battle between those two. And they're two of the best teams in the AFC. One of these two teams is definitely 100% going to get the top wild card spot. You can at me on that at the end of the season if I'm wrong, um, but almost positive. I think the Chiefs will um, retain that spot because they were so good last season, even when they lost Kareem Hunt. Dang it, I forgot the guy's name, um, but... I know that he did really good for them um, as a running back last season, um, so losing Kareem Hunt wasn't the biggest blow that they thought it would be. Um, so I do think the, the Chiefs have an offense. Um, Patrick Mahomes is the future for them, and Patrick Mahomes is awesome. He's like, he reminds me of Aaron Rodgers. Um, he's able always able to make something happen in the pocket. If he has the same season as last year, the, the Chiefs will definitely, um, I think, make it to at least the AFC Championship game. Um, but the Chargers also have a good chance of making it to the AFC Championship game. It's just the fact that, one, um, they won't have home field advantage if they end up in the wild card. And two, even if they were, even if they did win the division and they did get a home game, it would basically be an away game because they get no um, home crowd support. Um, it's going to take a while before they build that up and then they'll get the new stadium and that'll probably happen. As for right now, it's basically playing an away game no matter where you're playing. Um, which is a big disadvantage for the Chargers. So I think that'll be the um, I think that'll be the factor that decides the Chiefs will win the division. And now let's move over to the NFC. So we got the Cowboys, Eagles, Redskins, and Giants in the NFC East. And I think the obviously the biggest battle is between the Cowboys and the Eagles. The Giants are in huge rebuilding mode, and the Redskins can't seem to find a quarterback that will actually do well. Um, not to mention they get hurt. Like, five, 10 other players at least get hurt every single year. Um, that's a little bit of an overstatement, but, I mean, it's kind of true. 
first of all, we really have to see what happens with um, Zeke because I don't think that this team can um, be a legitimate contender for the Super Bowl. Um, I mean, it's going to be a question if they're a contender for the Super Bowl either way, but I don't even know if they have potential to make a good deep run into the playoffs without um, Zeke in their lineup because Zeke is so... He has su such a firepower to him, and he brings huge morale to the team. That being said, um, the same thing with Le'Veon Bell happened, and then Mason Connor really stepped up, and the Cowboys have one of the best um, O-lines in the whole league, so who knows. Um, but I think the Cowboys, they always say it's their year, and it never is. Um, maybe it could be this year, who knows, but I think that the Eagles are the best bet if Carson Wentz stays healthy, and that's a big but. Um, because he hasn't stayed healthy um, recently, and now they got rid of Nick Foles, so if he does get hurt, I mean, that's their that's their season right there, pretty much. And now we move on to another, what's going to be a really wild ride um, this season is the Bears, the Vikings, the Packers, and the Lions. So for those of you who don't know, I'm a huge Vikings fan, um, like, massive Vikings fan. So it's going to be tough um, not being biased in this prediction. That being said, I'm going to have to go with the Bears on this one um, because just their defense is so amazing. You know, they lost their old defensive coordinator last year, but it's hard to not do well with Khalil Mack. With that trade um, that the Raiders did with the Bears for Khalil Mack, I think the Bears 100% won it. No matter how much money they had to pay him, he is the pretty much the best defensive player, I think. Not just defensive lineman, but one of the best defensive players in the whole league. Um, so when he's in there, then it's all bets off. Um, so I th do think that it's going to be huge. Um, their defense is really going to do wonders. Will Mitchell Trub Trubisky um, have a huge breakout year? He did really well last year, um, but will he break out as their as an, an elite quarterback? And if he does, I think the Bears have a legit chance at the Super Bowl. That being said, I think the Vikings and the Packers both have a tremendous chance also to make it far in the playoffs. Um, is really prove-it mode for the Vikings. You know, they got Garrett Bradbury, and they were able to retain um, Everson Griffin. That was big. So I do think that if the offensive line holds up, if the offensive line is what they say it is, and then also um, if Gary Kubiak can prove that he can improve the running game um, and Delvin Cook can really shine, um, then I think the Vikings do have a legit chance. And then we got the Packers. They improved their defense in the offseason. Um, and if Aaron Rodgers comes back and actually plays to his ability and he stops blaming other people, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to be biased here, but I do think that Aaron Rodgers needs to step up and be a leader on this team and stop blaming everyone else for things. I do understand that he's got a lot of rookie wide receivers, a lot of... Um, not too good wide receivers surrounding him and the Packers didn't do a good job of really of improving that and he's pretty much going to pass to um, Adams like 80% of the time this season but Aaron Rodgers really does need to take a take initiative and say and not just blame everyone else for his problems not blame um, the coach which is why Mike McCarthy got fired he needs to really step up and actually take charge of his team if he does that and he is the Aaron Rodgers that he was a couple years ago a few years ago I think they do have also a chance to make it deep in the playoffs so all three of these teams it's gonna be a huge it's, it's gonna be a fun really fun battle to watch this whole season I'm really excited to watch that so now we go on to the NFC South I'm not even gonna waste much time on this as much as I hate to say it that I think the New Orleans Saints will run away with this division um, I think the Falcons will definitely be a much better team this year um, and if Cam can stay healthy, I think the Panthers are also going to be pretty good. Um, but the New Orleans Saints, their offense is just insane. If Drew Brees can stay healthy and stay the Drew Brees he was last year, I think they're going to be the best team in the NFC again. Again, I hate to say it because I absolutely hate the Saints ever since that 2009 uh, bounty scandal. Um, I have no respect for Sean Payton. I think he's um, he's my least favorite person in the whole league um I just don't like them I don't like the Saints I will root against them and hope that they do bad every single year for a long time so um but from an unbiased standpoint I do think the Saints will win that division they're just too good Mike Mike Thomas 
um, and Drew Brees, that connection is just amazing. And then finally we have the NFC West, um, which is the Los Angeles Rams, the Seattle Seahawks, the 49ers, and the Cardinals. Um, I think we can disregard the 49ers and the Cardinals. I think Jimmy G is going to do better for the 49ers, and the 49ers will be better this year than they were 4-12 and last year. Um, but I still don't think they'll make the playoffs. I think people overhyped Jimmy G, and now I don't hear many people talking about him anymore. I think he was definitely overhyped. Um, and the Cardinals are definitely in huge rebuild mode. It'll be interesting, though, to see how um, Kyler Murray does um, in his new uniform. Um, they traded away Josh Rosen, hoping for a re redo with that. And we'll see if David Johnson can be the running back that he was a couple years ago. Um, but the battle is really between the Seahawks and the Rams. Um, I think the Rams will definitely regress a little bit this season, especially because we're not sure what's going to happen with Todd Gurley. Um, this is a tough choice. I'm going to have to do a real toss-up guess here. I'm going to say that the Rams do just barely hold on to still win this division. It's going to be so, so tight between them and the Seahawks, I think. Um, but I think Sean McVay really has a gift in inspiring players. I think he he's a great coach from what I've seen, and I think he is gonna do good for the Rams for a long time. Um, that being said, uh, the Seahawks also have a great coach in Pete Carroll. Those are two of my favorite coaches in the league right now. Um, but I think as good as the Seattle, Seattle Seahawks defense is shaping up to be, and Russell Wilson's a great quarterback, I think the Rams are gonna come away with the division. So that does it for the division champions predictions. Um, I know that a lot of people have different opinions. A lot of people are gonna tell me I'm right or wrong. Please let me know what you think in the comments. Um, I'm just, I just did my best to try and break down as well as I could. Um, I'm not an analyst, but I do follow the NFL a lot. I pretty much uh, look at the NFL stuff with my all my free time. I love the NFL and I can't wait for the season to kick off in less than a month. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this predictions video. Again, please let me know what you think in the comments. I want to talk with you guys about what you guys think. I'm probably going to be doing some uh, baseball stuff now as the season is kind of getting down there. Um, talking about what the Twins need to do to get back on track. But thank you guys again. Please spread the word that this new channel is out there. Um, I would really appreciate um, any support you guys give me. Make sure you subscribe and turn on post notifications so that you know when my next sports video is gonna come out. Thank you guys again, and I will see you on the flip side.